send him a very angry letter. Dear Mr. Keith Fucker Asshole, why you not go on show idiot penis man this is white privilege at its worst I am going to sue you for libel give me a Good time. Love, Ellen Ripley. That sounds Sent. very, very harsh. As you can tell, I am pissed. I, I, I can feel the tongue lashing. Did you write in there anywhere how disappointed you are? I am disappointed. Dang it. Fool, man, idiot boy. Let his, let, let his soul feel How dare you disrespect my show, fool, chungus. God bless America. Amen. Amen. What? Giving me a cold shoulder now? Hi, Keith. How you doing, baby? Doing pretty good. To get my uh, to get my my message is. Um. Yes. <laughs> uh, it was Sarah's idea, I swear. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it was. I just got to adjust levels, because my microphone's always super quiet. I'm going to have to make you guys a bit quieter than me. Well, not not quieter than me, but quieter than you should be normally. Right. I'm tripping over my words. So, uh, huh, how are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. That's pretty good. Which is what you said. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah, recognize I, uh, the English language. I I, I, had, I got off work at 1 o'clock last night, and my little brother woke me up at, like, 8 o'clock today, this morning, um, so we could go to the gun show. Did you kick him in the fucking mouth? <laughs> no, I wanted to go to the gun show anyway, so uh, I went to the gun show. You could have just come here and seen my gun show. Yeah. Look at this fucking rock I'm holding. Funny. Yeah, no, he uh, he was looking for a new shotgun anyway, so I went with him to help look for a new shotgun. All right, so that's that's pretty cool. Is that just something that just kind of happens around where you live? Is just just uh, a local thing? You say local, but I mean it's massive. It fills up a you know huge huge uh, expo center. And, you know, it gets 10 or 20,000 people in there through, you know, over the course of two days. Cool. So it's not exactly a small thing. That, is, that is, does sound pretty interesting, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it. Um, mainly because there's a lot of people selling historical weapons. And once I get some more... Uh, Disposable income, that's kind of what I want to get into, is uh, collecting historical weapons. Cool. Keith, didn't you, uh, what, what did you study when you were in college? Uh, I was a history major with a minor in sociology. That's cool. So, so that's why you have all the interest in the, like, the historical weapons and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and plus, a lot of it's just really cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sarah, how was your week? I have a cat on my lap. Kitty cat. Cool. Uh, fuck, what did I do this week? I had Thursday off, and I did nothing that day. And it was pretty great. Ah. So, everybody, 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tales from the Fic, Episode 7. Our topic of the day is Power Rangers, and with me today is Keith McIntyre. Hello. And Sarah. Meow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Arf. Yeah. Arf, arf. All right, so uh, I, I am just not on the ball today. I, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit sick. I feel a little, ugh, you know? Uh, girlfriend has the bubonic plague. She won't be long for this world. Uh, yeah, so that's that. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to be here next week or any other week because I'll be dead. Uh, and I hereby appoint Sean Brown as a new king of this show. He's not here today, but I will appoint him king right here. Pom, ba da 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 I think we should get ready uh, and present our fan fictions for this week. So, uh, I guess this week I'll go first. I haven't gone first in a couple of weeks. And I haven't named mine. Uh, I guess I can give it a name now. Uh, fuck. That's the name. <laughs> Lovely. Let's begin. Once upon a time, the Super Power Ranger, who was also a wizard and was named Frank Radical, and was best friends with all of the Power Rangers, especially Kimberly and that Asian one, was walking down the street to buy some pickles from a Thornton's gas station. Unfortunately, Lord Zed was there with Rita Repulsa, and they were being fucking dicks. Lord Zed was just using all of the pennies from a take-a-penny, leave-a-penny jar to single pack, uh, pack of cigarettes. Rita was touching all of the donuts with her bare hands, but never taking any to buy. What a prick. Fuck! Frank Radical wasn't going to take this injustice lying down. It's morphing time, you idiots! Frank yelled, grabbing his belt buckle that had the Ghostbusters 2 logo on it. He transformed, as if by magic, into the Super Power Ranger, which looks exactly like reaching behind your back and pulling out a gun. Now listen, you fucking pricks, began our hero. I don't want to have to use this gun, I mean my Power Ranger martial arts abilities, and kill you, but your villainy has gone on long enough. The evil Lord Zed turned around and put his hands up. Please, don't shoot! Please! His eyes had fear in them. It was strange seeing Lord Zed without his visor on. Stranger still, that he looked like an, el an ordinary elderly man, but Frank could not be tricked so easily by this disguise. He pointed the gun at Rita Repulsa. Rita, you fucking dick! She too threw her hands up and began crying. She wasn't wearing her trademark hat. Today she had a baseball cap on and looked like a black teenager. She began to crouch down out of fear that her legs would no longer support her. Taking this as a clear sign of aggression, Frank fired his gun, I mean karate chopped, in her general direction. The karate chop hit the soda machine, making, it a, making a small entry hole that sprayed Mountain Dew Code Red all over the floor. Red drink was basically blood, so Frank considered it a confirmed kill. He then turned his attention to Lord Zed, who had began peeing his pants as soon as Frank karate chopped Rita Repulsa. Please, said Lord Zed, my grandkids are in the car, they can't see this happen to their grandpa. I won't fall for your seductions, Lord Zed, said Frank. He pointed the cold, hard, unforgiving steel of his karate chop at Zed's head. But before he could pull the trigger, a half dozen of Lord Zed's putties burst into the gas station, wearing black uniforms and shiny badges. White man with a gun, said one of the putties, bellowed. Tase him, and take him down non-lethally. Since one of the fucking putties talk, screamed Frank just before the electricity hit him. He slammed onto the floor, unconscious for only a few seconds. As the police closed in around him, I mean as the putties swarmed him, Frank sprung into action and punched their chests. This should have caused him to disintegrate, but instead, it just made one of them shout, He's assaulted an officer! Let's use more non-lethal force! 
As they hauled Frank away, Rita tried to stand up. This threatened one of the putties, who immediately karate chopped her seven times and then left. The end. Well then. True story. I believe it, yeah. Yeah. Your your karate chops are like a like a bullet gun. Just a bullet yes, yes, yeah, like one of those bullet guns. One of those bullet guns. Your Steel karate and... chops. Your karate chops rival Ric Flair's for stiffness. Uh I, I do have to say though, the, the only thing that doesn't sound realistic is uh cops shooting uh non threatening unarmed black teenagers. But you know. Uh, that that that's just that's just completely fantastical and ridiculous and not real, ever. Of course not. Just deny it and it'll go away. Uh, would anyone like to go next? Uh, I know Sarah didn't prepare one this week. She's picking one off the internet. Uh, Keith, would you like to read one? Uh, sure. All right. Cool. Just fucking do it then. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Um, this one doesn't really have a name, and I'm not gonna pick one. So fuck you. <laughs> All right, um, so... Hold on one second. Who's making those beeping noises? Uh, I have no idea. Sarah, is that you? No, I hear it very faintly, though, in one of your guys' things. All right, I'm going to systematically mute you guys until it goes away. Okay, no, I can't mute you guys for some reason. Keith, mute yourself first. Okay. Okay, it's coming from Keith. Yeah. Keith, womp, you there? Womp. Also, the kitten is chasing his tail on the tiny couch right now. That is adorable. All right, so getting into the story. <laughs> um, One day, the Power Rangers were doing bratty teenager things in the Power Ranger cave. Um, when uh, that big stupid head, Gorgon, pops up and was like, uh, There is a disturbance. I feel it in the air. <laughs> and so, uh, the Power Rangers in their uh, extremely racist Power Ranger uniform say, Power Rangers, transform! And so, uh... Straight white male! Red Ranger! Uh, girl! Yellow Ranger! Asian girl! Yellow Ranger! Uh, white girl! Pink Ranger! Black guy! Black Ranger! Nerdy guy! Blue Ranger! And, uh... They go out, uh... Somehow transported to the middle of this weird-ass field where they come across a uh, group of exactly the same dressed individuals um, who yell, uh, Dinosaur Squatch and Beast Ranger, transform! And uh, they fight. And then the Sentai Rangers kill them all because Sentai Rangers are better than Power Rangers. Fuck you. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Oh, that was a short one. All Super right. Sentai for the wed. Fuck Power Rangers. There you go. That that is a message we should be teaching in schools, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Watch the local Japanese version because the American uh, American version sucks. Yeah, fucking Americans. Uh, fuck them. It seems the the theme besides Power Rangers is also death. <laughs> oh, apparently, a lot of death. Well, I mean, you, you see what they do when they, like, punch putties in the chest, right? They fucking disintegrate. That's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, con considering the amount of explosions there are and, like, yeah. the disproportionate <laughs> few amount of limbs around them, like... <laughs> they fucking, like, stub their toe. <laughs> I gotta do a backflip away from it. <laughs> so many fucking explosions in that show. It's It's amazing. It's wonderful. I love it. Uh, Sarah, would you like to go next? All right. So the one I found is uh, is called 
when Bulk and Skull meet Zordon. Billy and Trini are sitting at the table at the youth center as Billy is working on device. He tells her that he hopes he can build a better device to help the rangers fight Zed. Tommy and Kim walk up to them. Billy greets them as the two say hey in unison. Tommy tells them it was an essay that he has to write on something that interests him. Next thing they know, a man is asking another man if a device can help them find the Power Rangers. Bulk tells his man that it will as the two of them are walking towards the Rangers, as Bulk messes with his device. He makes a said that he is about to find out the secret identities of the Power Rangers. The six Rangers are alarmed as Jason and Zack join them. Billy messes with his device. As it works, Bulk and Skull are led in the direction of Ernie, the owner of the youth center. Bulk says, Ernie? Ernie lifts up his one leg and acts like he's going to fight them. Before everyone starts laughing, Jason says, I hope you guys did not spend a lot of money on that device. Tommy is about to head to the library to do some research on his essay as Bulk and Skull disappear into two giant white beams coming from the sky in front of everyone. Kim quietly asks the other rangers what happened to Bulk and Skull. The rangers shrug their shoulders as Billy believes that their power energies combined with the sun and sent Bulk and Skull to some teleported elsewhere that went with their device. That makes total sense. Tommy said, Man, I hope those two do not end up at the command center or Zed's place. With those two ending up at one of those two places with their device, it cannot be good. Everyone else agreed before their communicators went off. The rangers went to a private place around the corner, and Jason contacted Zordon to let him know that they can talk now. Rangers! Morph before teleporting to the command center. It is very important. You are in danger, <laughs> Zordon told them. Jason told him that they will do it, not knowing why they had to do as he said as they were outside. Once that they see that the coast is clear, they morph and teleport. Back at the command center, Alpha is screaming, aye ye 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 Intruders! The rangers show up surprised to see Bulk and Skull on their knees, holding each other and frightened. Bulk asked where they were, and Skull repeated him. Two bullies then got up and noticed who was standing next to them. Bulk was in shock when he saw the six rangers morphed, there, standing. Then he told them he wanted them to take off their helmets so he can find out who they are. No! They can't do that! It is against the rules that I told them to! Zordon yelled. Oh yeah? Who are you? Bulk asked. I am Zordon, almighty mentor of the rangers. Alpha and I summon them when there is danger, Zordon told them. Alpha told them to hold still as he zapped them with a device and erased their memories of what they just saw and where they were as he teleported them outside the youth center again. That takes care of that, Alpha said. That was a close one, Tommy said. We all laughed. Ha 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 ha! That's them laughing, having a good time. Wow, that was just a really terrible fan fiction. Yeah, it was. That was a hot mess to read. <laughs> it was just, yeah, that's uh, I would assume it'd be like reading House of Leaves while really drunk. Uh, a book of which I finished this week. That was fun. That was fucked up. Hey, House of Leaves is actually really good. It is really, it's fantastic. Except it is a fantastic book. Really messed up. Yeah, I I like it. <laughs> uh, man, this is gonna be a really short episode. 
really yeah. dry and short, just like uh, like this dead lizard I found earlier. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this podcast is a dead lizard. <laughs> I mean, kind next of time for a podcast, we could, we could watch the Power of the Ooze and then just take a shot every time there's a pun. <laughs> Oh, I actually love that movie. That's just... I remember I was watching that movie with uh, my mom and my sister only like a couple years ago, and we were just we were just fucking losing our minds over how stupid it was. We were fucking laughing our asses off. It was fucking great. We should probably <laughs> do a commentary on that movie one day. It's That'd a be fun. Great movie. It's it's amazing. Um, yeah, sorry, folks. This is a short episode. Uh, we we were just. Not on the ball today. It's okay. It happens. Don't don't judge us, cricks. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Well, Idiots. we can we can discuss what we what we want to do next week. Well, next week we're doing Sonic. That's that's been predetermined by the gods. Uh, next week, uh, December thirteenth, we are doing Sonic the Hedgehog with Thomas Avantis, a friend of mine who's very much into Sonic, and Kristen will be returning for that episode as well. So we have, a full, we have a full fucking house. Well, I won't be there. Good! I'm sorry. Nah. I have finals week coming up, so I will be locking myself away for a it's long, a, long time. It, it's a good weekend to take off, because we'll have a nice full house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that. <laughs> wow, this... Uh, this is about as like awkward as the first episode, really. Well, I mean, you know, to be fair, it's Power Rangers. There's not a lot to do with Power Rangers. Yeah, there really isn't much to do. But Power Rangers really got big before I was really old enough to understand them. So my only context for Power Rangers comes from nostalgia. But by the time I would have gotten nostalgic for something like that, I had already gotten into uh, Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. So yeah. I mean, so I, I, I more associate the Power Rangers type things with Japanese uh, Tokatsu shows. Right. So, you know, really I have nothing but resentment towards American Power Rangers. How, how old are you, Keith? I'm 25. 20, okay, so you're three years older than me. Uh, I was really into Power Rangers when I was a kid, so I don't know what the fuck you mean but that you were not old enough to appreciate well, I mean, it. The first, the first series. Uh, yeah, I love that shit. Well, I mean, the first series came out in the early 90s, and and I kind of grew up in a house that uh, it didn't really uh, exist like, in the 90s. Excessively you, guys, you guys skipped a decade. Uh, excessively uh, violent TV shows, which, you know, at, at the age I was when it first came out, that's what they thought it was. They thought it was too violent for me at the time. Right. So by the time that they started allowing me to watch shows like that, it already kind of passed me by. I get you. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, so long. Farewell. This is the end of the show. Go home now. Hey everybody, Frank Margarella here again to close out the show. Thank you for listening to Tales from the Fic, Episode 7. Our topic was, of course, Power Rangers, and with me today was Keith McIntyre and Sarah. As usual, our royalty-free music was by Kevin McClayot of Incompetech.com. He is completely unaffiliated with us. We also used the MIDI version of Crocodile Rock again because we're incredibly lazy. And then I also used some sound effects that I got from YouTube. Uh, thank you and good night. Uh, sorry about the short episode and the crappy quality. Uh, it just hasn't been my day. Bye. Uh.